How long have you been keeping bees? We've been, me and my father have been beekeepers since 2000, so 17 years now. It's been a good long time. We've gotten a lot of experience. How many hives do you have? We did have 10 over the winter, but we lost one hive due to CCD, which is colony collapse disorder. And nobody really knows what causes it, but we were pretty lucky with only one loss. So we have nine out of 10. How much honey do you get? On average, we can get around, if it's a good year, we can get up to like three or 400 pounds of honey. And so you take like a five gallon bucket, five big milk jugs, and you fill that up full of honey and about one of those is like 50 pounds. So think of like five of those big jugs. So this is an undrawn comb or undrawn frame. And what the bees will do with this is you can see how they have some starter little combs on the front with plastic. And they'll use that as a starter piece and then they'll draw out the comb until they reach something like this, which has full drawn out comb on it. So you can see all the bees have done all this and it's a lot wider than something like this. You can see all that fully drawn comb. You can see on this side, I accidentally rubbed my hand along this. There's big as divot. And that's just a whole lot more work for the bees because they got to fix it and it's a lot more work for them. So it will make them eat more honey and it's a big waste of resources. So you try it whenever you're handling them, you try not to touch the insides or anything. Wait, can you, can you use that anymore? Stop touching it. All right, so what I'm doing here, you can see along here, you have a lot of uh, comb that they've drawn out onto the top. There's more over here too. And that's a problem because there's bee, there's something called bee space in the hives and they need enough space to crawl around. And when each of these boxes is stacked on top, it's not a whole lot. So if they start drawing comb in between the two boxes, there won't be enough for them to crawl around. So what we do is while we're working on doing something else, you just scrape out this stuff with one of these bee tools and clean up the hives. And this stuff right here is real dark brown stuff. It's called propolis. And that's kind of like bee spit, and it's their version of their cement. So if they're trying to glue something together, they'll put a lot of propolis on here. And something cool is each different kind of bee will either produce a lot of propolis or they will not. And you want the kind that doesn't really produce a lot of propolis because it's a really big pain to clean off and it takes a long time. So we just, uh, one of the hives we got from a friend for free because she didn't want to take care of it anymore. Her hives produced a ton of propolis, which is why this box is covered in brown like liquid and it's really hard to clean off. So I'll be here for a couple hours cleaning off boxes that this uh, hive had. And it's a really fun time. Kick back with a couple of tunes, knock back a booski or two. Yeah, propolis is a bitch to clean. This last noise. hive on the end, I we caught it. It was a swarm. When uh, so a swarm is when a hive gets really overcrowded, and there's too many of them for that wherever however big it is, and they need to escape that part. So they'll take about half of the bees, and they'll all get into a real big uh, black mob. You can see it and it'll look like a really big mass in the sky and they'll fly around and the queen is in the center of the hive or the swarm. So sometimes they will fall or they get really tired because they're trying to stay together so tightly and they will land on a tree. And when they land on the tree, people will think that they're gonna make a nest there but they usually will not make a nest there. So they call up their local bee chapter and somebody will come out and take that swarm and the last hive on the end is one that we caught ourselves up in Baltimore. So there is a reason behind the color of each box, not specifically in the order they are, but like the white, they don't, won't react as aggressively if all of the boxes are white. That's why we have full white suits in our big white suits. And so you can either use yellow too, that's also a good color. And the ones, this one under this uh, yellow box here, it's called a pine dipped box and they'll take a mixture of saps and resins and they just dip the whole box in the resin mixture. And it's supposed to be just as good as paint to keep them fresh and new. But they are, well, they are, they're performing fairly well. So we're happy with our purchase. So the white is a good color for bees because they won't act as aggressively. Why? I don't know. I know. Why? Tell it's me. It's because bears White's are chill. black. Oh yeah, that's and, true. And it's the opposite. Yeah, you want to Which are colors scare the bees? Is honey bee vomit? 
Yes. For Rizzle? Yes. I think. Cool. This is the swarm I captured just a few months ago. I'm very surprised they made it through the winter because we didn't do a whole lot to prepare them because they were the last hive we got. Is it? Do, they, do you ever get stung? Yeah, I get stung sometimes. Uh, oftentimes I work without a full bee suit on and I just work in like shorts and a t-shirt because they really won't sting you that often unless you're really ripping them apart and taking apart all the hives and messing with them. And so recently we had to de-winterize them. So we had to put the bulls full bee suit on and take apart all of the hives and put in a queen excluder and the queen excluder is a little frame with a bunch of like a grill on it and you put it between two of the supers in the background the two layers of them and the queen is forced because she's a lot bigger than other bees she can't get through that grate like unlike the other regular bee worker bees so she has to stay down where all the, like the regular uh larvae are so that she doesn't disturb the honey or start laying uh, larva and honey. To get the honey out of the hives, we there's about 10 frames, like this big and this wide, and pretty thin, and the bees will draw out the comb on either side of the frame. And you take each frame and you have a like a long, wide fork with very sharp ends, and you scrape all the caps open, the ends of the, because they'll cap off the honey so you can't get in. And then you put it in a big centrifuge, something that spins around real fast, and it flings all the honey out along the edges and it falls down into the little recess of the centrifuge and then you have a little knob that you can open and pour out the honey in, and then you can filter it out and that's raw honey. Uh, have you ever had problems with animals? Uh, we've never had any problems with like mammals or anything but we have had other wasps and stuff try and rob honey from the bees so if we have lots of barns around here and wasps will make homes in them and then like four or five wasps will attack a hive and try to get in and rob the honey from the bees. And to stop that, we put in something called an entrance reducer. And what that does is makes it a really small hole so only like one or two bees can fit through it. So it's almost impossible for the wasps to like overtake that area. And so that's what we do when we see them getting robbed. And sometimes the bees, each hive next to each other, will try to rob from the other hive. And that's, we also put an entrance reducer on for that. So the bees can go up to a few miles out. So. All the way down the road, they'll go and try and get nectar from all the flowers and pollen. And so they take that pollen and nectar, or they take the pollen, turn it into nectar, and then they take the moisture content of that nectar down to about 18%. And that's what honey is. Really low concentration of moisture. The bees, they'll breed bees. There are bee breeders. And so we recently got these, uh, this breed called a Minnesota Hygienic. And the really big thing, or really great thing about the Minnesota Hygienics is it's in the name, they're really hygienic. So nothing like this is gonna happen. All this propolis I was talking about before, it's not gonna be there. They're gonna keep it really clean, really neat comb, and they're not gonna have any crap around the hive. It's gonna be really nice to work with. That's why we really like Minnesota Hygienics. One of the back, or the drawbacks of that is, it, once you start messing with the bee genetics, they can get really hot, which is when they get really angry, and that's when we call them hot. It's a hot hive. And so they'll start stinging you, and those are the kind of hives they gotta wear a full suit for. A lot of the hives that I have though are pretty calm and I won't wear anything with it. I'll just wear a shirt and shorts and I can work with them fine unless I'm really making them mad, doing something wrong. Each side will have what we call bee spacing, what I was talking about before. And so you try to keep this area clean and give it a little space for them to walk around in so they can get around in the hive. This is one of the five gallon buckets that I was talking about that we store honey in. We also store uh, sugar water, which is what we give the bees right before winter happens so that they can get their last little bit of honey to survive the winter. That's not what we give people when we sell the honey because that's real nectar and stuff from the flowers. But the honey, it, or the sugar water really helps them survive in the winter. So you unscrew a bucket and you got all this great honey. Uh, does, does the uh, population of bees dying at an alarming rate worry you? Uh, it is very worrying for the entire world because you know, bees are the main uh, pollinators of the world. So all the crops and the big fields of crops, bees are the ones that take care of most of that. Some, some other insects do it too, but none as much so as the bees. And if all our bees die, then all our crops will not die, but they will die a lot. And then the scientists will have to manually pollinate each one. They can manually pollinate. It's just way harder for us than the bees. Bees have had, you know, been at it for a few million years. They, they do a good job.
I have this one special bee. He comes to me every couple days when I'm out here, and I named him Barry B. Benson, and he's my special bee boy. He's got a real big bee painted on his thorax for Barry. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs>